Tim held leadership positions with Bombardier and McDonnell Douglas Corp. And he also serves on the board of directors of Seattle, uh, Seattle Goodwill, a nonprofit organization that provides employment and basic education training. He previously also served on the board of directors for Olive Crest, a premier children's charity. Please join me in welcoming Tim Myers. Thank you, Frank, for the introduction. I appreciate it very much. I just have a four, short 45 minute pitch for you today. So just relax, get comfortable. Here we go. Um, no, it's my privilege to speak to you all today. I mean, Wings events, I've been to quite a few in New York. I'm looking forward to the gala coming up here at the end of the month. It's always fun. Frank was just telling me about the entertainment, but I won't let it slip. But I know he's under a lot of pressure. It's been getting better, better, better every year. Um, but looking around, I mean, and I look at this crowd, we've got a lot of the leaders in aviation finance here today. I mean, we have, I'll do a shameless infomercial. For any of you who haven't signed up, Boeing has its financier and investors conference literally across the hall right after this event. If you aren't signed up, you can just go be with some of our folks. You can sign up and attend. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about aerospace today. I'll talk, obviously, a little bit about aircraft financing. But I'll hold some of my comments because i got to go right across the way and do it as well. So just bear with me. Um, but it's a great way. This event's a great way to kick off what will be a very busy week, I'm sure, for many of you. I'm sure you've got your uh, dating calendars quite booked for the rest of the week with the uh, Airline Economics Conference happening uh, here in this very venue. But, you know, again, Boeing Capital, as Frank mentioned, our role is really not only to do financing, and we don't do much. We really want all of you doing financing. We're shameless in the way we like to use other people's money. Um, but we also make sure that we're out there talking about two events like this, about the industry itself. Um, what are some of the trends that are happening? And then give you a perspective really on what's happening with Boeing as well. Um, Boeing's relationship with Wings goes back pretty far. I mean, um, a few of the names that have spoke at Wings events, uh, Alan Mulally, who many of you know was a key leader for us at Boeing Commercial Airplanes, um, a guy by the name of Joe Sutter. I don't know if anybody has ever flown in a 747, but he's the godfather of the 747 product and, and recently passed just a, a year and a half ago at the age of 95 and still was attending uh, customer events at the age of 93. So just a terrific uh, person for us. And also Kevin McAllister, who's our current CEO of Boeing Commercial Airplanes, was actually president of Wings uh, just in 2014. So uh, it's a terrific networking event. For those of you who haven't been to a lot of Wings, uh, you've got some very influential people in this room. And for those of us who have been around a decade, maybe a little few more, uh, like myself, um, this is a relationship business. So we get deals done by people you know and knowing that they can close deals and move forward. Um, let's talk a little bit about aerospace. Uh, the aerospace market today is probably uh, the strongest I've known it for several decades. Um, I've been in this business for over 30 years. Um, you know, it's now being talked about as one of the strongest industrial sectors uh, out there today. Uh, we look at Boeing, we look at the market. You look out the next decade, aerospace is about an $8.1 trillion market. Th over $3 billion of that is just the commercial aircraft side. So you've got a lot more that's in services. You've got some that's on the space and defense side. But you think about $3 trillion, that's a little bit of financing to go around. I think everybody should be happy. And that's just the next 10 years. Um, we also do what's called the current market outlook, or the CMO. Um, Boeing's been doing it for over 50 years. And we've done, gone back and looked at historically. It's actually been a very conservative forecast. So we came out with a new forecast again this year. We upped it. We say in over the next 20 years, 43,000 aircraft will be required just to handle the replacement and the growth in this industry. 43,000 airplanes. Think about that. 
That's an uptick of about 1,700 aircraft from the last year that we published this. We do it annually. So the market's healthy. Boeing's healthy. Our backlog is over 5,800 aircraft. That's seven years of production. So it's a strong place to stand and be behind. Um, many of you know we've been increasing production on our 737s. We've been increasing production on our 787s. Um, we've been increasing production on the 767s, which are uh, freighters. Um, we still got the 747 line going, uh, and obviously 777 and ramping up on the 777X. So <coughs> very interesting time. I mean, you think about growth rates. You think about how long will it stay. We always get asked, when is the cycle coming? It's really not a, about the cycle right now. It's really about what's going on in the industry. You look at the growth rates. IATA came out with it. I'll give you a few statistics. Four billion passengers flew in 2017. Four billion. Phenomenal. The airlines are running at the highest historical load factors they've ever been on. I mean, if you fly domestically in the U.S., it's almost impossible to get on an airplane that's not jam-packed. You're always delayed today because they're trying to grab bags from people that are trying to shove them up and get them into the load down below. But again, record-setting load factors over 81% recorded by IATA with that 4 billion passengers as well. Asia alone is adding 100 million new passengers every single year. You think about that. I mean, Atlanta is one of the busiest airports in the world. I think they do about 50 million passengers a year. Double that. And that's just the new people adding to the Asian market every single year. I mean, globally, you've got only 6 to 10% of the population flying today. So we like these numbers because they're pretty mind-blowing. That means that 80% of the world's population has never taken a single commercial aircraft flight today. That means a lot of potential for growth, a lot of potential for growth. You think about what's happening you know, with economies around the globe. They're all strengthening in one form or another. The market itself is more geographically diverse than it's ever been. From Boeing, you look at our order book, and if you would go back 25 years, our order book was predominantly North America and Europe. Today, it's the bulk, the, bi the biggest portion is Asia for us, with about 25% of our production going into the Asian markets. Uh, China continues to grow by leaps and bounds. Even though the economy is slowing, and I don't know if 6 or 8% growth rate is a slow growth rate, but it's down from where it was, but the passenger growth in their airline traffic continues at over 10%. So phenomenal opportunities, phenomenal opportunities. And Boeing's not standing still. I mean, we're introducing this year the 737 MAX 9. We're introducing the 787-10. The this region, you know, we're putting in, we're delivering the first of 30 787-10s to Etihad later this month. So phenomenal. And then the 777X. The 777 X has been a big, this region has been a huge supporter of the 777X with the bulk of the orders coming in the 2013 Dubai Air Show. Um, huge supporters. Let's focus a little more on the region specifically. You know, the Middle East has some really unique advantages in terms of growth and prospects and what's happening. Um, it's been very resili resilient when you think about the growth that's happened over the past 20 decade and what's going on in the next 20 years. You've got an opportunity for a growing middle, in middle class coupled with kind of some low fare, low cost carriers that are coming in. Tourism is really starting to develop even more. Um, today, Middle East counts for just less than 4% of the global GDP. Yet, the airlines in this region provide more than 10% of the global capacity. When you think about what's happening in this region alone. So, a lot of advantages coming out of here. Look, a fun little fact. So the Middle East is uniquely positioned in that only an eight-hour flight away from 65% of the global economy, only eight hours away from 70% of the 20-year economic growth targets, only an 80-hour 
only an eight-hour flight away from 85% of the global population. So you think of that market, is the potential is very, very large. The next 20 years, we're forecasting through our current market outlook, a demand for just under 3,000 airplanes. The other thing that's unique in this region is most of our regions are dominated by single aisle aircraft. In this particular region, almost 45% of demand is for wide body aircraft. And why is that? Why is there a preference for wide body? Well, there's two key drivers in our view. Um, the usefulness of serving really high volume routes into Asia and Europe, and also providing one stop itineraries for people come into the region and shift gears on ultra long haul markets. So again, with that access to about 85% of the global population, think of what can really be happening here. And it, we have seen growth. And Boeing, we've seen uh, the orders, especially as I said, the 777X market is just phenomenal. What we've done with the 777, what we've done with the 787, especially on long haul, uh, point to point kind of markets. So another fun fact, 210 new nonstop routes opened up by the 787 since it entered service, 210 new routes. One of those such routes is Abu Dhabi to Brisbane. Um, Middle East continues to be innovators and leaders, both in terms of the use of the airplane, you know, the whole network and the design of the airline industry, as well as evolving in aircraft financing. You know, we launched the 777X and the 787-10 in this region. On the financing side, Fly Dubai was an earlier adopter of the AFIC insurance product that was launched by Boeing in, in March. Uh, just last month, Boeing announced, along with Novus, NordLB, and DBJ, a subdebt fund that will be offering Cedar Aviation Finance. Um, one of the first few products, our first few customers there will actually be from this region. We hope to have that done by the end of the year. So with all this growth and innovation, it's a great time to be an aircraft financing market. Let's talk a little bit about that. You know, at Boeing Capital, as Frank mentioned earlier, you know, we're driving infrastructure issues, um, whether that be Cape Town, which we've been an active participant in well over, I think, 18 years now, if you add it all up. And I think many of us, as we go to structure deals, one of the first things that's asked by the rating agency or some of our primary investors is, is that country Cape Town? And have they accepted the right declarations? Well, we've been a key, key driver of that. Um, Dan De Silva was just in Prague on a panel talking about GATS, a new <coughs> technology transfer tool to move aircraft effectively, efficiently, and very timely. Um, as we've seen the number of transfers going up and up and up each year, a lot of us spend a lot of money uh, moving aircraft, and we've got to make that more efficient. So I mentioned aerospace is one of the strongest sectors, industrial sectors today. Overall, aircraft financing markets continue to do very, very well. We've seen more liquidity. We've seen more innovation, I think, in the history of my career. Um, one of the interesting things, and I was actually having a conversation this morning uh, with Lessor, aircraft are now preferred assets. They used to be assets that people had a unique, it was kind of a niche market, but today, we're getting people coming in from all asset classes, whether that be real estate, shipping, other hard fixed assets. They're looking at aircraft, they're looking at the industry, the long-term profitability of the airlines that are having today, and the forecast with the global diversity that we have now, the ability to move aircraft, we are getting more and more players coming into the market every day. So there's a lot of capital. I know many of you are feeling pressure on yields. Um, but that brings innovation as well. Uh, we see opportunities to continue to diversify the type of lending that you do, whether that be short-term funding, whether that be unsecured, secured, um, portfolio trades, you name it. We've also seen the ABS market take off. I mean, you think about what's going on now and how many of the lessors, especially the very large, let's say the top 10 lessors, look to diversify their portfolio through the ABS markets. Um, that wasn't true five years ago. 
um, it continues to develop. You also look at leasing. Leasing is now 40%, owns 40% of the aircraft in the marketplace today. So what does that mean for us? What does that mean long term? Well, one of the things is we've seen banks have a real preference for funding lessors. Because of, if you think as a bank, I'm going to lend into uh, an airline direct, or do I lend into a seasoned asset management team that knows how to manage the asset, who knows how to transfer it if there's ever a problem, that can really monitor that investment for me. And so we've seen, again, tremendous liquidity for the lessors and the financing requirements they have. And being the fact that they're taking on 40% of what we think this year, I think will be about $130 billion marketplace. If you look at just the new deliveries from ourselves and our competitors, um, that's quite a bit of money. And it's a, it's a terrific market to be in. Um, lessors help us, the Boeing company and the OEMs in numerous ways, they help startup airlines move very quickly. Many of those startup airlines have grown into household names. When you think about Lion Air, you think about Goal in Brazil, you think about Norwegian. These were all startups at one point. They're all very large, well-seasoned airlines at this point. Um, they use a real balance in the marketplace of capital markets and bank debt. Um, they also have selective use of export credit. And we've also seen them uh, chatting about AFIC uh, and in the insurance markets. But sale leasebacks are a very real, uh, very real tool for our airlines. I mean, I've heard the competition today, on, especially on those products that are most preferred. I'll just stick with our products for now. The 737-800, uh, customers will talk about anywhere from 30 to 40 bids on an RFP when they go out looking for a sale leaseback. So that's a lot of liquidity. That's a lot of strength and something that makes Boeing smile a lot. I know some of you in the room may not be smiling so much because of the pressure that puts on yields. Uh, but again, it's a terrific time for our, uh, for our customers. Another growth area is sub debt. Um, sub debt is something when you look at certain asset types and what banks are lending today, there may be a need for mezzanine funds. As I mentioned, we just launched the Cedar Aviation Finance Fund. Uh, but that's another way to potentially diversify yourselves and call yourselves out to airlines seeking uh, more transactions. Let me share one final thought. Um, at our financier investors con you'll, that you'll, we'll be launching here in just the next few minutes, I guess, um, we do a survey. Everybody that signs up for the conference, you have to fill out a short survey of about 10 to 15 questions. And we, get, we ask all types of different questions. And one of the things that uh, people feel is the hardest thing for lessors to deal with right now is the pressure being placed on yields. But then we also ask the question, how many of you are growing your portfolio? How many of you are continuing to invest uh, in the space? And I will tell you, we do this in five different locations. We go to New York, we go to London, we're obviously here in Dubai today. Uh, we go to Tokyo, and then we go to China. And in all locations, the answer to that question is over 95%. We are growing. So all of you, I hope you're all growing as well. Boeing Capital, we're here to help you do that. Uh, you'll see on our signs, we've been out there now over 50 years. Uh, really helping the market and helping Boeing customers, working together with all of you. Um, so in closing, I'd just like to say, you know, um, we do this, we do this together. Um, as I said, we at Boeing Capital, we have a small portfolio, but we make it happen by working together with all of you and finding creative solutions and innovations. So I want to thank you, Frank, and the Wings Club for inviting me up and having a chance to spend a little bit of time uh, talking about aircraft financing. I don't want to give all our secrets away. That's, that's in the, across the way in a little bit. We all offer some, uh, some good beverages as well, but uh, thank you for the time. And I think we have a plane to give away as well, right? Thank you.
So there are really two things. One is a plaque oh, I would like to present you. to you. Oh, Presented to Tim Myers in grateful appreciation for your presentation at the Aviation Leader Series of the Wings Club Foundation, Dubai, October 2018. Fantastic. Thank you.